In this last lesson of Substance, I will tell you about another little big secret which will multiply your plane enjoyment many times. And this is another thing which I may have told you since day one, but I'm happy I waited until now, and here's why. First of all, going the relatively hard way of understanding what the major harmony magic table is all about, of learning about intervals and scales, and performing harmonic analysis on a few standards, has made you a much better musician. And if all you had been playing so far was traditional blues and rock, this knowledge puts you a big cut above the rest of your fellow bluesmen and rockers. Also, this knowledge provides you with the necessary basis to tackle, if you want, the advanced techniques of bebop improvisations, as we will briefly discuss in the next uh, lesson. And the second reason why I'm glad I held back introducing this last secret is that, well, it's a little bit like cheating. In a nutshell, I'm telling you that in many cases you can get away pretty well, have tons of fun yourself, impress your bandmates and please your public by artificially assuming that a song is all in one key. This is what I call the power of melodic improvisation. I cannot really explain how it works, but it bloody well does. Let me show you right away with a very fitting example. All of Me is another very well-known standard, particularly appreciated by those into swing and gypsy jazz, and at, at first glance the chord chart looks nothing special, and in effect it is nothing special. Chords don't get any more ordinary and run-of-the-mill than these ones. If you were to follow the method we applied before, you would perform harmonic analysis on the chart and see what keys different parts of the song are in, and then decide what scales uh, you're going to use. Let me be clear, this is the method that I recommend that you use whenever you're working on a new song. But however, experience of many years has taught me that you can play beautiful solos on All of Me by assuming that it is all in the key of F major. Problem is, this standard is definitely not all in the key of F major. I have highlighted in red the chords that do not belong to the key of F major. In fact, according to the harmonic knowledge we have acquired, these chords have nothing to do with the key of F major. And yet, listen now as I improvise over a backing track number 11, using only the F major scale and its relative minor, D. absolutely fine, doesn't it? My only explanation is that our ear somehow tunes in to the F major harmony and follows the melody I play rather than the chord progression. Any note that may clash according to traditional harmony is somehow ignored by our naturally melodic ear. This is a very tentative explanation, however. Please do not quote me on that. And I suggest use this trick and don't tell anybody. You're perfectly justified in doing so, however, because anybody will tell you, including the purists, that jazz is about what you want to play, what pleases you. And I can tell you that by cheating in this way, you will certainly please your audience as well, which for me is the most important thing. Fact is, however, this dirty little secret does not always work. And for reasons that I'm even less capable of understanding and explaining, there are standards on which it works very well, and others on which it does not work at all. What I suggest you do is that you look up the formidable 
Learning Jazz Standards channel on YouTube. Here you will find dozens of professional backing tracks for jazz standards and bossa novas. Pick a standard you don't know and feel your way around. Try to see if using a single major scale lets you, lets you build good melodic lines and have fun using that scale or its relative minor. A couple of good examples are the standards for and there will never be another U. And on these you can very effectively use the E flat major scale and its relative minor C. I invite you to watch this performance I recorded at home. You will hear me playing the song's theme and in jazz that's often called the head and then go into a few choruses of soloing. As you watch the video, try to make out when I'm using the E flat major scale and when I move to the C natural minor and or C blues pentatonic scales. thing, as I say, is that these are the right scales for certain sections of the song, but certainly the wrong ones for other sections. And still, it sounds good. I think that's jazz for you. <laughs> 